Barnacle back with us for the hour. And we begin with the lawsuit from the state of New York against Donald Trump, his eldest children, and the Trump Organization, alleging years of fraud. The state is seeking $250 million in damages and wants to bar the family from serving as officers of New York-based companies. The lawsuit is more than 200 pages long and outlines exactly how Trump allegedly overvalued his assets by billions of dollars to get more favorable loans. Trump, his children, and the organization are accused of using more than 200 false and misleading asset valuations over a 10-year period. New York State Attorney General Letitia James says she has referred the violations to the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York and to the IRS. Everyday people cannot lie to a bank about how much money they have in order to get a favorable loan to buy a home or to send their kid to college. And if they did, the government would throw the book at them. Why should this be any different? It is a tale of two justice systems, one for everyday working people and one for the elite, the rich and the powerful. Following that news conference, Donald Trump railed against the attorney general in release statements and on social media, again calling her racist and claiming the case is a witch hunt. Let's bring in MSNBC chief legal correspondent and host of The Beat on MSNBC, Ari Melber, also with us, federal criminal defense attorney, Caroline Polisi. Good morning to you both. It's good to see you, Ari. I'll start with you. Uh, just your broad impressions of what you heard at the news conference and read through in that 200-page lawsuit. How much trouble potentially is Donald Trump, the Trump Organization, and his children in this morning? A lot. She threw the book at them, as you mentioned, an over 200-page book in the form of this lawsuit. It's a civil case. That means, as I uh, think viewers have heard, she's not one of the type of legal officials who can throw you in jail. Um, so she sues, she takes you to court. Um, but she is in a way trying to put the Trump organization in jail and put Donald Trump, the officers, including the indicted CFO, now convicted in the DA case, and his children on ice. And so they couldn't run this company or any company in, in New York. That is a big penalty. Uh, if you think they deserve it, then that's justice. Uh, if you think, for example, that a lot of companies uh, do a lot of valuation and asset games around the margins, and it might seem like overpunishment. Um, it won't be up to the rest of us, you know, sort of debating it or opinion or Donald Trump's angry screeds. It won't be resolved that way. This is a system of justice where a judge and a court process will ultimately decide have these people systematically lied and cheated so much, uh, and in a legal sense, defrauded others. As you know, Willie, and as uh, the clip you played alluded to, if one person's underpaying their taxes, well, the bills still come due and other people are overpaying their taxes. Uh, and so the question is, have they defrauded to a degree that a judge will agree with what James has asked for? And then the other part that probably, I would guess, scares Donald Trump a lot more is two criminal referrals, IRS and SDNY. Uh, and we're going to be reporting on and watching very closely whether those initiate new investigations or, again, in fairness to Donald Trump, whether perhaps you could imagine the IRS saying, yeah, no, we heard about this stuff. Uh, we realize it's weird that he apparently has billions but went years without paying taxes, but we've already looked into that, that they don't feel there's, quote, news in James' report. And my final point on that, Willie, there was some news in, for example, new accusations from Trump's own CFO. Uh, we don't think the IRS or other entities had that because that just came out in the last few months through his court process. So certainly there's some new things. Will they be further investigated on the criminal side is the largest question. So, Caroline, we're talking about alleged fraud here, examples like uh, saying your apartment is 30,000 square feet and that it's valued at $327 million when no apartment in the history of New York has ever been anywhere close to that, but it's actually 11,000 square feet and worth a fraction of that. Um, but that's just one example. Uh, the attorney general laid out 10 years of this, a pattern uh, from the Trump organization and from the Trump family. So what did you see in this document that would concern you if you were one of Trump's defense attorneys? Uh, a lot, really, but but that's exactly right. You know, Tish James has made no secret of the fact that she's had Trump and Trump Org uh, in her crosshairs for years. She effectively ran on that um, platform, and she has opened herself up to a little bit of criticism on that side. You'll note that Team Trump, their defense is sort of, you know, this is a witch hunt. This is a uh, malicious prosecution. Um, you know, he's being singled out. Everybody does this in, in sort of the New York real estate world. That doesn't fly in a court of law, Willie, and the breadth and the depth of this complaint, I mean, over 200 pages of meticulous facts. This is a documents case. 
documents don't lie. Square footage doesn't lie. Um, it, you really get the sense that the Trump organization was more of like, like a fraud scheme uh, with a little bit of a legitimate uh, business sprinkled in there at times, um, as opposed to like a real organization. I think this could be the, the real death now. And what about Ari's point about the referral? So this is a civil matter in terms of what Letitia James is pursuing here. But as Ari said, talking to the Justice Department, talking to the IRS and saying, here it is, sort of gift wrapped. Here's a whole bunch of evidence if you want it. What do they do with that? Yeah, I mean, tangentially, I think Alvin Bragg, the new Manhattan DA, has a little bit of egg on his face today. Um, you know, he took over from Cy Vance. Mike Pomerantz famously resigned from the prosecutorial team because he felt like there was enough evidence in sort of a different case to move for a criminal indictment of Trump. Um, I think he may be uh, sort of licking his wounds and, and looking back over the evidence today. But that's a, that, those are state crimes. But certainly the IRS criminal division, as well as the SDNY, which is a federal um, you know, office, will be looking into these federal crimes. Ari, given all the investigations, given the multitude of evidence that is piled up against uh, Donald Trump and the Trump Organization, after all of these years, all of these charges leveled, are you surprised at all that his taxes haven't been popped out? Uh, it's a great question, Mike. I'm thinking about it here on the spot. Always be careful thinking on live TV. <laughs> I guess the answer is that if you knowingly leak tax returns uh, in full, uh, you really can go to prison. I know it sounds wild when people say, well, he hasn't gone to prison for his allegations, but I think there are certain types of materials uh, where there's heavy sanction, they're traced pretty closely. And so while we have seen pieces sometimes selectively leak uh, in certain ways, and the Times, New York Times report obviously had exhaustive information about tax avoidance, um, I think that the larger system of rule followers means that most of the people who have access to them are the rule followers, um, which, by the way, undercuts the whole witch hunt deep state uh, attacks in the first place. The idea that the IRS or any other entity, uh, the DA's office we just referred to, for example, in New York, which was a democratically won office, oh, if they get stuff, they'll leak it because it's this and that on deep state. You know, that, that hasn't really happened for the most part, although information has dribbled out. I think the other thing that's interesting um, it's really a nonpartisan point is whatever Donald Trump did or didn't do through the Trump organization was done with the leadership of the financial institutions of America and the world. And so if it is a massive multi-year fraud, let's be clear, that implicates Deutsche Bank and other entities. And if it's not, as I said, they'll figure it out in court. Um, so yesterday was very bad news for Donald Trump. It was a reminder that the justice system may move slowly, but... If, if someone would have told you a couple of years ago Trump's CFO was going to be in jail for the way not they did Russia or something else, but just ran the business, that would have felt like a big headline. I think people sometimes are exhausted. So the system is moving slowly. The system is working in a way, and to the extent the courts do find massive fraud here, that implicates not only Donald Trump yesterday, um, but a lot of a lot of American finance in a way. So